well, it's cleaning up. Mind, oh, well, it's, yeah. I mean, they, the they can't not. <laughs> right. <coughs> well, that's cool. All right, so uh -huh. first thing we're going to do is we're going to play, play the, uh, what did you play? Speeding. No, nope, can't get okay. Welcome to Surfland. Yes. No. Chris, can you just tell me, that, or, or Billy, if you can tell me what this song is la last right in? It's last song mixed. <laughs> it's last song mixed. mixed. <laughs> it's about, uh, it's not about, it's not, not about any, it's, there's no lyrics to it, it's just an instrumental. Like mm -hmm. a, like it's a about, surf it's about taking a break. Taking a break. From all your worries. Sure would help a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Something that's let you relax between beach. all the other slow numbers over there. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to okay. have a little break, yeah. as you'll find out here in three Thanks. Something to wake up to. Why? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
That's so funny. You should have somebody, oh. a kid, drowning at the end. <laughs> Last wow. breath out. Wow. <laughs> that, that song's also called uh, Smoke Em If You Got Em. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, as I would imagine, I, a lot of people would say a surprise for, um, well, the, one of the many surprises from what I've heard from, you know, from this record. Mm. Probably the biggest surprise. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm with the rolling I'm, I'm still surprised right now. So how does this work? Like, so this is, this is the first time you guys have listened to it in a, in a mixed form to this song? Yeah. yeah. And then do you, do, sometimes do you change it quite a bit from that point, from the first listen through, or? We can make it silly, right? We can turn it into a punk song. We nix <laughs> anything that's not cool, and yeah, you know, anything we're not, we're not into, and anything we are into, maybe bring it up a little louder. Just make sure you know, the whole track fits together. Make sure it all kind of meshes together. Are there, for, with an instrumental, is it any different than, than a, well, a I th vocal? I think this one would be a lot more subjective because it's, Pretty much, there was a lot of elements on here, mm -hmm. and I created like a canvas for him. So this is a little, a lot different than some of the other songs we mix, yeah. Because most of the straight-ahead songs that we have done, they already know exactly what they should sound like. Right. So it's like, wow, that's really good. Except that one harmony is a little bit too loud, or that one's too low, or or this bass riff got to come out here, mm -hmm. or that guitar needs to come out here. Mm -hmm. Where well, this is more of an experiment for these guys. Yeah. So that if it first listen is going, hmm, we had to hire this guy, didn't we? <laughs> um, right. So it's it's a whole different animal this this situation because it's more of a mood piece. What? How? This song kind of came about like we would have like small amps and um, a little drum set backstage mm -hmm. at, at our shows, and we'd end up just we like we did another surf song called uh, well it's more like a spy called espionage, uh, espionage. Sure. and. Um, and that's where we would just get together and just play, and we just and it kind of was just sort of like a joke, sort of like goofing around or whatever. And then usually all of a sudden it's like this huge beast. Right. From being really <laughs> well, this is pretty. I mean, a lot of layers. To, I mean, the xylophone and everything. Is that what that was? Marimba. 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 It's a real, real lazy song. Like after the show or something, we'd be just covered in sweat, laying down, half holding our guitars, playing this, you know, just uh -huh. to relax. <laughs> right. And it was like I don't know. It turned out to be a something we like doing so that's it's kind cool. of fun you know that's cool are you looking forward to seeing how people react to sort of different maybe unexpected things on this record than what people might associate with the I'm band? just looking forward to hearing the album no. done <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know no. it's like we I mean I personally I fell into this record so hard you know like the past we've been recording it for like four months yeah. and um, there's a certain thing like because after this it doesn't really belong only to us anymore, right. you know, and, and I don't know that like personal attachment that that I have to it isn't going to be there anymore. So, kind of don't want to give it away, yeah. but we have to. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, it's the same. It's like putting a big giant steak out for the lions to eat. You know. Do you feel that way more now, having this be your fifth record? I mean, did you feel less that way? Say, say with with Dookie, were you just totally ha you know optimistic about what the response was going to be? Are you now more Kind of, you I think know, we guarded just didn't about have it. a clue with Dookie. We, yeah. were, we were just kind of like put it out, and whatever happens, can't be any worse than anything we've done already. Uh -huh. You know, yeah, um, I mean, whereas, was, yeah. like, uh, you know, with Dookie, it was like, you know, it, it, we had no idea how it was going to turn out. You know, because it was basically, you know, punk rock up until that point. It, you know, you don't make money off of right. like being a punk rocker or whatever. You know, so <coughs> yeah. so we had no idea. Oh yeah. <coughs> they took our in a It's almost like people who've never seen it before. I mean, I've never been in a mixing session before, so I have no idea. So I'm like, you know, it's just, it's just go through and show them different instruments. Of course, we're gonna show them over here. Bongo boy. Yeah. Where's Bongo boy? Bongos on a Green Day record before? No one's ever played Bongos on a Green Day record. <laughs> <laughs> I played all the uh, harp. You played the harp? Oh wow. I'm sick. <laughs> I played the ocean. <laughs> Good work. I did. That's a guitar! Whack 
Ricky. Huh? <laughs> you can't do this at home. Ooh, there's a fire. Wow. There they are. Darth Vader and his boys coming to get ya. We're saying, okay, well, I'm hearing, I'm hearing some bongos here, you know, uh -huh. I'm hearing some vibes here. That would be really cool, you yeah. know, and this and that. And so, same with the espionage thing, you kind of know yeah. the things that'll, that'll work. You kind of know, you know, like, oh, we want, you know, maybe some mariachis here or this or that or whatever, you know. Yeah. It's not really good. Because it all, it all goes with a, kind of a style of playing. Uh -huh. Which one of the water? This, I played this myself, yeah. actually. Ah, oh, man, you make me, I gotta go pee now. <laughs> Making me have to go to the bathroom. That was actually it's an sound. ocean of alcohol, folks. Sounds of Mike surfing. Oh. You play this one too, huh? No, that's that's like a Humphrey the Whale. Look down by the seaside. This was the old. Uh, where's that? Oh, uh, he only plays a little bit. He I only gets a little small moment. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> oh yeah, mariachi. <laughs> Did you actually find one? El Cholo. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That was a little we got. Well, that's what he was talking about. Hey, Rocky. Yeah, that it's kind of bad. snakes during this song. <laughs> yeah, we had to charm all the snakes. But we had no mics. I think every orchestral instrument is like orchestral instrument. <laughs> orchestral. 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 For you, like, like Mike was saying, it's obvious for a song like this, what instruments would work with it, vibes, or... Or, or something like this. Harp. Something like this. They put all these elements on, uh -huh. and I just kind of waded through it and it made certain things highlight certain areas. Yeah. And so it was basically since I've already mixed 25 songs from right here. Well, let me take a stab at this one and see how well I can do. It. Yeah, yeah. Just establish the mood for like it's like the album closer here. Uh huh. You know, as far as the mixing. He said stab. And now he has a giant rock ballad. <laughs> yeah. We're there. Horns and all. We're not going to hear this in a, like in a Green Day live show, show, are we? No. no we <laughs> I would you might hear it if you came backstage after the show. You <laughs> hear us jamming it. Yeah. It might yeah. sound a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. Bring out the old Boston so, pop. We actually nice recorded jam. this at the beach. Yeah. It's a funny thing. Yeah. You know, it was, it's kind of hard because the music I stands kept sinking in the sand. I had to go back out of that beach and get those waves back on it. Yeah. 
<laughs> we went through like so many microphones, like recording in the ocean. Yep. The salt water gets into those bad boys. Yep. All the instruments kept sinking in the sand, so it was really difficult to. Yeah. I played play. the bongos actually out at sea on it's a longboard. Funny long because board. we we actually had a mermaid play the harp. It was really nice. <laughs> Should we play? The harp is uh, now underwater. Yeah. 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 It was punk rock. Mermaid. Platypus. Oh, yeah. Want to hear another song? Yeah. Let's let's yeah. hear something a little Jason, on the other gonna, side of the spectrum. Yeah. Jason, we're gonna play some these other tracks now. That's So that was well, that paper sheet went off. We had to stop. <laughs> Before we were so rudely interrupted, that was Platypus, oh, right? No. Right. Now was that was that an early, yeah. early track? One of the last ones you did, or kind of? It was like somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was recorded, like, like, it was probably like the eleventh or twelfth song that we recorded. Small. Small. Was was most of this stuff was uh, was most of the material stuff that you had done over a period of, of time, or stuff that you wrote specifically for this record? Or? Well. Most of the writing on the record has been done like within the past yeah, year and a half. Jason, we but the there, John. Yeah. Uh, we're back. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it blew out the light. No. Which light went out? Well, I asked one of your your guys if it's a hundred watt light plugging back in. He said it could. I don't know. I'll turn something off. Maybe the Jason. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, it's a small light. <laughs> no, we're. <laughs> since we're supposed to turn it off. Uh, rolling again. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Right. About halfway through, just yeah. Fade it down. <laughs> I'm just saying he just wanted us to talk, like play the first half of the song. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That was a little Nothing. too low. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk over that. Yeah. Well, you see, the thing we did with this song is turn it up. <laughs> so what we should we hit next? Uh, talk about that track. No. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so Platypus, you were saying that was, that was one... A lot of this stuff was done the last year and a half, the stuff that was written for the record. Yeah, this song has probably been written in the past year and a half. And um, But there's also some other stuff. There's a song like Good Riddance, which was written right after we got done re recording Dookie. And then there was another song called H Hashinka, which was originally supposed to go on Dookie, but we decided last night not to put it on, which is now going on this record. Which I asked, I, I knew that name. If you guys ever done that live, Hashinka, was that ever in a, or I've read about it somewhere? Or? No, I think... What what happened was like we we gave someone a tape of, of that song and then it kind of filtered out like it like I think it was on the kid. web that I actually read yeah. about it yeah there, some kids ended up getting a hold of it and like mm -hmm. then they kept on writing me about it and stuff so decided to put it yeah yeah so w were you actually writing stuff 
after you know when you were touring for Insomniac, were you actually writing for this record? Can you write on the road like that? Well, that's kind of the, one of the reasons why we came home because I I don't like to write from like a road perspective, but I like mm -hmm. to be at, I like to be at home because it just likes more what real life experiences are and stuff like that. And and uh, and on the road, it's just like you know, last thing I want to do is be like, I'm a cowboy. <laughs> right. yeah. Road weary. <laughs> Songs. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, um, any any preference for what we see here now? Or let's break something else. Or? Let's play. Uh, let's, let's play the hitching ride. Yeah. 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 Single. First single. Just the first single. Yeah. Right. Sure. Um, anything you want? Anything about this song you want? It should speak for itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay Falling off the wagon. Yeah, the song is, well, I don't want to give that away. It's not really. It's diving. It's <laughs> okay, yeah, it's diving <laughs> off the wagon. And um, Petra from That Dog. That Dog, nice. yeah, Petra. She came, she played... Um, <laughs> that Dog Petra. That Dog Petra. <laughs> oh, no. no. Yeah, 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 okay, <laughs> edit, 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 <laughs> edit, edit. A lovely young woman. <laughs> she's a sweetheart. Yeah, she's, she's pretty great. Kid. Yeah, she, um... <laughs> that was awful. No, she. Well, the, we had a space in the song that we. I just thought would violin should go. Mm -hmm. So, and we we actually dealt with people that are like more like professional players to play the violin part on it, but it just wasn't right. And Petra's got like a good rock. Yeah, rock sensibility and pop sensibility, mm -hmm. and she's also kind of weird. Mm -hmm. So it kind of worked out. Cool. It is all right. <laughs> And just when we thought it was going to be Stray Cat Strut there at the top of it, it completely, uh, yeah, completely. I mean, that was the initial connection I made, but yeah, there's a lot of people know, make yeah. that connection. I mean, Stray Cats were great, yeah. it's, all, it's, all, yep. it's also got a Cat Calloway kind of a vibe, <laughs> yeah. Did you guys, either either Rob or, or you guys, did you did you really want you know consciously to, to bring in different things on this and be a little bit more? You know, try different things, different I, sounds on this record. Then yeah, but to, but to go about it is like as like a natural process. We didn't uh -huh. want to completely break away from what we've done before. Right. You know, because I I always hated bands that completely changed after. Yeah. You know, so we just that's why there's so many songs on this because we wanted to sort of bring out every side as possible. Well, it's definitely not a complete uh, departure. I mean, there's uh -huh. there's plenty of, I guess what people would say, recognizable Green Day stuff on here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
it, it's going to be what, like 20, 20 something tracks altogether? I think 19, 18? Uh huh. Around there. 18, 19, something like that. Right. They got to put it on two vinyls. Remember that song? Uh, in the song, it was 19. No, 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 19. Twice as long <laughs> as everything we've <laughs> ever done. <laughs> So, from what I could pick up from the lyrics of of that one, um, it was it's a sort of, sort of like on the substance tip. Yeah, you know, a little bit. A little sort of a geek stink breath follow up, maybe. Well, it's more about alcohol. Oh, than then. Then not no. That, the, I, haven't, the I, haven't, I haven't been to, going there lately. So, despite being in LA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um yeah that's so that's the first single. Are you do you guys get involved in in choosing singles a lot? I mean do you do you let the label know what? Um your well I, I kind of I mean we sort of knew that this song was going to be like the first single. Uh huh. You know and then and then the you know the the people at the record label talked about it too and everyone sort of. Then we also got a radio reaction. Yeah. That that seemed to confirm Billy's suspicions from the beginning mm -hmm. that it was the right first single. So yeah. How much have you? Good. How much have you had a chance to to play this stuff live? Any of the any of the new stuff? I know you did the Viper Room. Show. We played, we played the Japan. Viper Room. and We played a club in Japan not too long ago. That's about it. Uh huh. And we played actually we played a party in Oakland in this warehouse on Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day. In Oakland. So it was just like uh, split all of our friends and stuff. So. And even you had a lot of this stuff, this material at Valentine's Day that long ago. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Most of it's it, been, actually. Really? Yeah, the, 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 the record was basically written, written. Was like before we went in the studio. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. Writing in the studio is a really dumb idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've, you've, tried, you've done like that Like a finish-up yeah. thing or something that's like that is one thing. But that's a lot of bands come in the songs. studio and just with like a few songs and then write the rest of the record in the studio, which can be, it can be really good and it can be really bad. We just assume write them at home uh -huh. and wean out anything we don't like. Plus we like practiced in a garage, the same garage we've been practicing in since we were practicing song up there. And uh, we just made sure that all the songs were super tight before we even yeah. booked any studio time. Yeah. So what do you wanna any any preference, Jason? Did scatter. you scatter? What? Scatter. scatter. One of them was the was the hit. Look at this yeah. map. Oh, Oh yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's fucking dying. Right. Yeah, that's 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 that's, 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 that's one of those the songs. The whole album, or just the, the whole just, album. yeah. That's one of those songs where that's I mean, the only. Fix, 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 yeah. That's the only. Okay. That's Mix one of those it. Songs where you only know that lyric. Hit it. Mixed, scattered, smothered, covered. You're going to get kicked. <laughs> 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 I, 
I guess I guess the song that people would say is kind of more you know characteristic Green Day. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, is there any any particular so story behind that song or where that came about? Uh, it's a song. It's about my wife, mm -hmm. Adrian. I used to rock and roll, and I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good you guys know each other so well. That's we share everything. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh, that was bad. Oh, God, it doesn't get any uglier than that. Uh, um, I, was just, <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying to Rob that it seems like with this record and um, uh, maybe a couple tracks from Insomniac, but the sort of like sweeter kind of harmonies in mm -hmm. the vocals are, are more pre from some of the songs I've heard on this are, are more present on, on this kind of thing. Is that is that something you, you enjoy going more in that kind of direction, poppier oh. kind of? Uh, well, you know, we we're actually the, our first record, which uh, <coughs> like 1,030 nights moved out slappy hours was, records, really. <laughs> was that I mean our our first one is really poppy, uh -huh. you know, and had like harmonies all over it and stuff, and and really re and thinking about it now, it's sort of like kind of going back to that a little more I think mm -hmm. like for a couple songs second yeah. even the second record for Plunk had a lot of harmonies on it you know mm -hmm. a song called Words I Might Have Ate that's just like acoustic with all harmonies and everything and we stream, went away from that and we're basic just hard hitting rock and roll right. and now we're kind of just going back in, into hard hitting sing song rock and roll I, I it know? struck me on like um, 86 on the last record that it sort of there was a little bit more of that and for some reason that song stood out when I first listen to that record mm. is for that reason in terms of that just you know the vocal the you know the harmony mm -hmm. um so you're not necessarily want to do more of that just it seems to be going in that that direction yeah like you know i mean wherever you know whatever yeah. happens happens you know i mean i think i you know i was a really big fan of like who's could do mm -hmm. and they and bob mold and grant hart had that great like they had had their voices went really well together and, mm -hmm. and that's sort of like what i but you know, I kind of wanted to achieve too for this band. So now, in addition to Scattered, there's another track that was sort of about your wife too, right? I think that yeah, there's a bunch thing. of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Billy wrote them all. I wrote them all. Is that do you, is that you know f sort of family kind of thing? Does that influence impact a lot more your writing now? Do you think or um, not any more than when I wasn't married. Yeah, really? but um. It's just, I mean, we, I kind of wanted to, you know, I, to write about, like, my son a little bit, my wife a little bit, because that's really significant in my life, right. you know? So, I mean, it's, that's all. Is it in, it, do you think this record is, I know a lot of people talked about in, Insomniac being kind of dark, perhaps maybe in comparison to Dookie anyway, lyrically, is, is this any less so, do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's, I'm sorry, what was that? Was it some not as dark a record lyrically, do you think, as Insomnia? There's some dark songs. Oh, yeah. we can play them Take Back. And on that note, there's, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's, 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 it's like, I mean, some of this, Dookie this, was kind of an action. Mm -hmm. Insomniac was a reaction to all that had happened to us. And now, now we're on a creative path again, just kind of like, you know, right. striving for another action. This is kind of just something, you know, I don't know. There's, there's some of the most aggressive, you know, punk rock stuff we've ever done. Is mm -hmm. on this record right. probably the most aggressive punk rock stuff, and you know, and yet some of the like the most straightforward, you know, punk pop stuff, I guess, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Pretty, call pretty, it. pretty yeah. songs. We have pretty right. stuff on. Yeah, it. it's pretty <laughs> it's aggressive. Right. Uh, There's a lot more sides to the band are represented on this album, I think. Yeah. Than in, in some of the previous ones, because we're getting a, a lot of different styles of songs on this record. Mm -hmm. Whereas maybe Insomniac was really hard driving. Yeah. You know, I mean, to a point, it was hard driving, and this one, you know, we're getting a lot of the different angles and the different things that these guys are into. Stuff that maybe you, you'd wanted to do for a while and weren't ready to do on the last record, or well, it didn't fit with the like, the, 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 like the mindset we were in on the last record. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it and it all basically comes down to three instruments. You know, bass, drums, and guitar. Mm -hmm. You know, still kind of the same premise. Any good rock and roll song should be able to be played on an acoustic guitar and still be mm -hmm. a good song. Despite the fact that the, there may be horns on one track or yeah, I mean, strings on another, as we broke that down for you, I still, you know, yeah. still think that's just a little flavor. Is a great song, you know, with mm -hmm. or without all the extra stuff. Yeah, you know, we do. You, do you see yourselves having any extra musicians out with you when you go? No, it's not. Record? Not. Yeah, we're yeah it's called an opening band. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> on stage with you. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> well, we were thinking about hiring Millie Vanilli. Which one? Millie or Vanilli? They don't get along anymore. Just a dance. Just a dance behind us. One of them got arrested, right? For like beating someone up in Hot. Hollywood oh, Hot. Like six months ago. It was probably Millie. I heard he had a bad temper. <laughs> Millie well, No, no, it might have been Vanilli. You never know. <laughs> cool. Um, should we hear... Someone called him Vanilli Ice. Yeah. 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 Probably is. Can you tell me anything about that before we listen to that, King for a Day? Um, this song is about dressing in drag, and it's pretty macho. There you go. Macho's you know, Mike, well, the it. whole thing is to try, that, like, the, uh, the idea behind it is to try to get, like, fraternity guys, like, singing, like, an oi song, but singing about dressing in drag. <laughs> <laughs> you will pr so provide lyrics <laughs> yeah. with this? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. But they just won't know what's, what's <laughs> right. going on, you know? I'm like, gang, sure. Uh, gang. <laughs> Nah, blah, says, blah, blah. What's that next line? He's like princess. No, never mind. <laughs> so <laughs> it shouldn't be queen for a day then, if it's. Well, you gotta hear it. Okay, okay, okay. It's queen right. of the day. <laughs> Are um, if anyone Stephen Gabriel, yeah. Stephen Gabriel, Stephen Gabriel, they're the guys that play live with No, no doubt. doubt, yeah, they're really good, yeah, um, great, great, really guys, good too. guys. Did great you guys. know them already? And well, I, I Steve's from Richmond, actually. yeah, he's from he's Bay. Yeah, I slept he's, he's with him, but I don't Indian. really know him. That way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're a slut, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> 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 No, I, we had a lot of fun with it. We just like sat around and drank beer and mm -hmm. yeah. they played horns for it, you know. So, yeah. and lest so anyone yeah, read too much into this sort of drag thing and, and think, you know, that there's any autobiographical sort of storyline here, I, you know. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> right. This is your chance to give a disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, you know. Right. Well, you've, I mean, you've even sported a frock now and then on stage. And, a what? A, 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 a dress. dress? Yeah. Well, I've sported absolutely nothing on stage <laughs> yeah, that, Yes, you have. You, that's you've true. You've sported a frocking dress. <laughs> right. on stage right. right. yeah. but no Well, women. once I, I wore a slip, this pink slip that had all these flowers on it, real pretty uh -huh. get-up I was wearing, and uh, I had no underpants on. Uh, my so, I, I, so you can imagine, like, you know, like my jumps, people get a little mm -hmm. more okay. of the 
that they bargained for. <laughs> on stage fans, like the Marilyn Monroe effect. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Woo. Trey used to wear a pink tutu. That was kind of nice. And Mike used to have a really beautiful, like, Heidi sort of thing. It was very strange. Really? It the later like, Hosen yeah. yeah, skirt? Yeah, it was pretty scary. Me next, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was a babe. <laughs> Were you? Oh, yeah. Okay. I was uh, very androgynous at the time. Oh. Ah. Now I've, uh, I've passed that point. <laughs> now I'm just ugly. Uh, right. <laughs> Um, any any others that you guys? I think you were talking about that. Oh, that's right. That's they promised me that I would be, uh, I would be a little, a little well, surprised with good riddance. That there's a. Oh, he's coming. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Sorry about that. So, uh, what are we doing here? Are we playing another one? Did you need a rest yeah. or something? Good riddance. Yeah, my shoulder needs a rest. You need like one of those like. Put a heater shot on it. <laughs> you, you can tell the senior cameraman because they get so, really fucked. Roll. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Tom grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life. So take the photographs and still frames in your mind. Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and their skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life Is that something you've had for a while? You wanted to do? Yeah. Why? Well, yeah. I, I, I like I said, told you about that about before. I wrote this back in like right after Dookie came uh -huh. out, and um, I don't know. I mean, there was no way I wanted to put like something like this on Insomniac or anything right. like that. So, but this time it was just the opportunity to to do something different, you know. Uh huh. And is I mean doing something like this? I mean, it really, I mean broadening this the 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 sound of this record. I mean, is it? Are the, I guess, are the kids gonna, are the kids gonna get it? You know, I mean, the people who are hard, sort of hardcore Green Day fans, or you know, it, I, I yeah. really don't give a shit. It's yeah. like I get it. Yeah. We're really selfish. It, I'm, yeah, I mean, <laughs> right. it's a song, it's a song that's really personal to me. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, I don't really care. Yeah. It's like it's not about that right. at all for me at all. It's like I just want to. Like before, best. like I before I am, I, I would ever consider myself a punk rocker. Before that, I'm a songwriter. Right. You know, so like any way to branch out and just keep a, like a <coughs> direction and going down different avenues uh -huh. with it is. is much so was there one story incident that sort of inspired this song? Mm, I probably can't talk about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. And the strings in this are these the ones that um, Beck's dad worked on? Is this yeah. This yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. that? David Campbell. David Campbell. David, yeah, yeah. He looks exactly like his son. Does he? Or vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably vice versa. <laughs> There's some weird stuff going on around here. Done fishy. So what is it like when you guys are working, it's been four months working on this mm -hmm. this record? Mm -hmm. Three months, four months? Do you, and, and I know you said you've been going back to, to the Bay Area most of the time on the, on the weekends, but do you, do you find that your like, lifestyle changes when you're working on a record? Do you... Do you live any less healthy? Do you, do you, I mean, 
Trey's, Trey's like smoking the butts over there. I mean, is it like, do you do more of that when you're working on a record? Do you? I don't smoke cigarettes. You just, no? you're just, uh, I just wanted to promote smoking. It's a whole different mental frame, you know. Yeah. You really, you, you find yourself just in this whirlwind of, of music and just constantly going through whatever you're doing, like tracking these songs or or vocals or whatever, and you find yourself just concentrating all your energies on that, and other other parts of your life have a tendency to fall apart uh -huh. while you're focusing on something <laughs> exactly. that you really want to make happen. Which ha you know, and then your time outside of the studio is really dedicated to stressing out about all the shit that fell apart in your life. Yeah. But for the most part, I mean, we just we just get in there and we focus every bit of our energies into the songs, you know, because that's what we're here for, you know. And if we don't do that right, then we kind of fail, you know. So. Do you find that if there's too many distractions, be it Home life, friends, family, whatever, that just gets in the way of what you're doing. I mean, do you have to sh kind of shut yourself off from things, or? Um, yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, yeah. and they, isolation. It's a yeah. very compromising position, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and all the distractions that uh, that Hollywood might have to offer don't really get to you. No, we're too busy working like 12, 15 hours a day in the yeah. studio. So, mm -hmm. you know, Holly Weird has nothing to do with that. Although it is a city of angles. <laughs> <laughs> have you have have you been able to like when do you when you're working on a record do you have time like to relax do you get away and do things here or like I mean um it's pretty really minimal like, yeah. yeah you know I mean, remember that one time we went out that was cool and it was yeah. hot outside that was great yeah that was cool <laughs> I well, and it was night nice. it's, it's been hot for a while it's been hot really. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I I think this record more so than the other res records. I think we sort of bled over this one a little more, yeah. Just because it, it, we took more time, we got you know we we get, you get this thing called studio itis where mm -hmm. like you'll be listening and everything sounds like shit, like everything is out of tune, and like in it's like the wrong tempo or something, you know. So I'm which not, comes and goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you leave and you come back in the next day and it sounds great. You're like. Ah, what happened to my ears? You know, but yeah, it's all panned. Do you out go now. back and forth on the on the idea of like how sort of you know clean or pristine you want a, a record, to, a given record to sound? Like, do you want, or, or as opposed to how maybe live or raw you want it to sound? Or like, will you leave in mistakes, for instance? You know, if you. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, not all the time, but uh -huh. you know, like I, I, we had this what problem. What mistakes, that, John? I don't, <laughs> you tell me, I don't know. <laughs> well, like one problem we we would have is after every take, Trey would throw his sticks, oh, yeah. and then it would fall on the floor. So it was the, those were mm -hmm. getting was to kinda, be kind of a pain. My they're, kind of all, they're kind of all over the record due to that. <laughs> really? Wow. It's it's this bad habit I have. Yeah. When it's a, it's live a good thing. take too. It's only when it's a good take. When it's like. When it's it, and I know it's it, I'm all, yeah! <laughs> 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 it just <laughs> ruined it. It's, it's a live reflex reaction. Totally. Yeah. So you don't necessarily, I mean, you don't go back and, and time and time and time again to get something absolutely perfect. You'll just live with something. Usually it takes one time. Really? You are pretty infallible, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> one. Actually, yeah. Uh, you should have told me that a couple of months ago. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't like, I don't like cheating. Yeah, it goes back. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, <laughs> perfection, per, you know. Yeah. Each song is different, you know. It depends on the difficulty of the song. And who knows, I mean, even when a song's really difficult, we might just nail it, you know. Uh -huh. And there could be a simple song that we just keep making stupid mistakes on, you know. Like, you'll, you'll be in the middle of playing, and you're like, yeah, this is a great take. Huh. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> no other time in life does your nose itch that bad. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> turn on you, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> three quarters of the way through the song. I'm not sure which song it was, but one of these songs I, I recorded, like, did yeah, his headphones oh, turned totally completely silent. And I just, like, yeah, felt the beat through the nerve, <laughs> through the veins in his forehead. I'm a very thin <laughs> skull. <laughs> do, you, do you ever listen to, are there any old tracks that you just say to yourself, well, every time you hear it, you wish you'd done this again, or you wish you'd done something differently, or... No, no, not really. no, no. I mean, there's, there's some songs hey, yeah, that we okay. played. Ego. <laughs> there's some songs that had a little bit from playing live. There's little bits and stuff that that came out later on that were like really cool. But mm -hmm. that's what live's live is all about. Yeah. That's what makes a live show better than right. the record a lot of the time. You know. 
Didn't you guys have a live? We're just different, I would say, you know. Didn't you have a live record come out in, in Japan or something? Yeah, we had yeah. two. Uh -huh. yeah, like, like one was called Foot and Mouth, and the other was called um, bowling, 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 Parking, Parking. Now, is there a reason you didn't put those out here, or just? Uh, it was pretty much like a, an exclusive yeah. Japanese. Well, they were pretty much recorded in Japan too, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was for the kids that got to go to the show too. Yeah, you got to watch out for live records because there's a certain taboo and putting out a live record. Yeah. Even like Peter Frampton. <laughs> 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 Even for you guys, I mean, <laughs> I think a lot of people would say that that's the way Green Day is best experienced is mm -hmm. live. I mean, even so, you still wouldn't want to put one out, probably. No, we'll put out, we'll put out a live record when we're dead. <laughs> so speaking of Japan, I understand you were supposed to play the Mount Fuji thing, right? The, yeah. The ill-fated. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. 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 Yep. Mm -hmm. Typhoon. Yeah, I heard about. Uh, we just did really? a thing with. We just did a thing with uh, Rage last weekend, and mm -hmm. they were telling us how they barely got in their set. Yeah. I guess. Barely got out alive. Yeah. They got away from that. <laughs> and, um, but you did play, you managed to play a club show over there. Yeah, right? we yeah. played, uh, what was the name of that club? The Area. area. We played the Area in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was packed. It was, pa it was like, show. like 500 people in like a 250 200? capacity. Wow. It was and, yeah, very, so it very was, hot. Uh, yeah, I was dying like the whole time. And bleeding. And bleeding. I had blood everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, right before <laughs> we went on stage. <laughs> he cuts himself. He's he cutting our roadie's hair and he cuts his finger. He's like, Shit! <laughs> I gotta play on this. <laughs> so he's playing, and there's just blood all over his guitar and his hand and his arm. He's just like, I know. Like, and and needless to say, it looked damn good. It, it, <laughs> cool. Don't get me wrong. He hands me this. He hands me this scab of a guitar to play. Right? Like <laughs> when we switch up on this one song, he's all here. I'm all. <laughs> Trey's all putting on what surgical gloves, getting ready to play a song. He's cool though. You know? Here, play a right. song. That's Hold on, let me get my gloves. That's right. So. Wives, blood. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway, should we do one more? I yeah, don't know. We're, we're done then. Please. Yeah.